I want to sh show you something here in the Bible right quick tonight. Um, and while we're while you're turning, I think it's Luke. First couple chapters of Luke there, maybe somewhere along in there. Uh, I want to show you something here in the Scripture that's really yeah, Luke chapter two. Uh, we're glad that all of you here tonight. We're going to have a meeting as soon as I get through tonight uh, for the. Uh, for camp, we still got people coming that's been stuck on the interstate. There's another load right there. Amen. And we're glad these these young men are here with us. They're getting ready to go to the big race over there, motorcycle race at the Loretta Lynn. It's a national race, best of the country. And oh, this young man here from Salt Lake City. Raise your hand there, brother. Salt Lake City, Utah. First time you've been to North Carolina? And uh, uh, Digger, whatever his name is, Digger, I think. Digger boy? I think it's a shovel man, something like that. Ho, ho, uh, uh, forks, forklift, something. Getting a digger. Uh, we're glad he's here. Amen. And J-Man, what's he doing here tonight? I knew this would happen right before camp. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I need, what, uh, it's my sins coming back to haunt me. I'm, Listen, you try to take this crowd to kill. You try it. You think it's easy, you try it. I make out like it's all fun and everything. It's key. Ain't nobody in the right mind would do this. No, I, I love it. I, it is hard, though. Let's take a, the Bible and look at Luke chapter 2 tonight. I want to show you something in the Bible. It's going to be really, really short. Um, this is the only, the closest you can find to Jesus being a teenager. He was 12. Most 12 year olds, um, you know, they figure that. Anybody 12 years old here tonight? All right, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six. <laughs> Not in mind. Uh, in a real, real year. 12 year old. Jesus was 12 years old. You know what you ought to do if you're 12? You ought to look and see what Jesus did. He's just getting ready to turn teenager. There's nothing mentioned in the Bible from time he's 12 to time he's 30. So that's, uh, what, 18 years there. We, he worked with his daddy, done something before his public baptism and his ministry. His ministry is only three and a half years. And he's 33 and a half when he died. So this is the closest you'll come to finding this. And I want to preach to you on the only perfect teenager. It ain't you. The only perfect teenager. Mama, it's not yours. The only perfect teenager. Daddy, it is not your son. Sorry to tell you. I know some of you people think your kids are perfect. You are in for the shock of your life. You're living in denial. Um, I, I had three teenagers at one time in my house. Lord, we're going to have ten tonight, I think. I think we got 13, 12 or 13 spending night at my house tonight. And um, uh, I know what it's like to be a teenager and have one. I was, when I was 14, I was playing in a rock and roll band. And about the time, well, when I was 12 and 13, my sister played basketball in, in high school, and I went to the ball games, and I absolutely just fell in love with basketball. And I think that the Lord and my mom's prayers used basketball to keep me out of keep going down that road as a rock, rock musician. I wanted to. That's what I wanted to do. But I like basketball better. And I still do. Still. Now, I'm a preacher and play music and everything, but I still like basketball better than I do playing an instrument. And um, I, I remember my coach in basketball, we was in the gym running, playing ball. I was 15 at this time. And the boys in the band come down to the gym and came in the gym. We said, Danny, we got practice. And I looked at the coach and he said, you're going to have to make up your mind if you're going to play ball or music. I said, I'm going to play ball. And them guys were up and I quit the band. Thank God for that day. Now, I, I thank God for that day. Hallelujah. That might have been uh, the Lord having me make a smart decision for, for even before I ever got saved. It was the next year, that year, or that year was when I got shot. My friend, me and him went camping. He, he, 
We come in the next day, and he's pulling out the sock, opened the sock drawer, and reached in there and got a pistol. And his daddy, they never kept no bullets in it, but his daddy had had it out the day before, loaded it up, and shot, shot it twice. So there's four bullets in that thing. And he, he pulled that thing out of there, and I was standing in his bedroom, and he pointed it right at my chest and went click and pulled the trigger because they never had no bullets in it. I said, man, what are you doing? He said, you want me to shoot you? And I, when he did that, I put my hand and said, get that away from me. And I put my hand on the barrel of it like that right there and put, and buddy, he pulled that trigger the next time and it went, pow, right there. Right there was the hole and right there is where it came out. And I'm telling you, I went like this. It knocked me all the way around. I didn't fall, but I went up, I went all the way around like that and up against the bed and blood just uh, squirting everywhere. And he said, oh no, his mom come down the hallway and she went, whoo! She's going to pass out. She's worse off than I was. And I, I was 15 years old, went out like that, and he come that close to shooting me in the heart. Now, who do you think that was taking care of me? That was the Lord taking care of me. Mom was at home saying, God, please don't let nothing happen to him. God, please don't let nothing happen to him. And the devil was saying, kill him, kill him, kill him. But I always knew when I was little that I was going to grow up and, Change the world. <laughs> you, did you ever feel like that when you was little? I used to think, I'm going to do something great one of these days. I'm telling you, I'm going to make a mark for God. I did not know that my life would be, my heart, my mind, and my life would be controlled by a book, the Bible. But I sure thank God that it is. And the Lord's been good to me. It's been a long journey, but I've been blessed. Well, I didn't mean to tell you all that, but we went to the hospital, the old, the old Marion Hospital. Some of y'all don't even remember the old Marion Hospital, before they built the one now. And somebody stopped the pool hall down there and told, so they said, Danny, got, da, David shot Danny. And, and I, had, I had company up there while I was still sitting in the emergency room just bleeding like it was just a pile of blood on the floor. And I remember I, I was all right. I'll tell you one thing. You know what it feels like to get shot? I'll tell you what it feels like. It felt like you took a, a clothes hanger, a wire like a clothes hanger, and heated it in fire and stuck it through your hand and hold it. That's what it felt like. It felt like burning fire inside my hand. Now these guys on TV that get shot, you know, and then ride a horse 30 miles and beat up Indians, I don't believe that. So they're tougher than me if they can do that. I'm pretty tough, but I'm telling you, you ain't gonna ride no horse no 20 miles and beat up Indians. And they get shot right here in the shoulder, Clint Eastwood and John Wayne and all them guys. They get shot with a 44 bullet that big around and still fight and carry their woman across the railroad track and everything else. And that's, that's a bunch of junk. If you can do that, you're tough. I'm telling you, you're tough if you can do that. I, 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 can't, I, I thought I was dying. And I laid in the hospital that night. I only spent one night in the hospital. God's been good to me. The old person like me, I think I've spent Four nights in the hospital in my life, I think. One, two, I have a kid, uh, my appendix took out. And then when I hurt my knee, and then one other for something, kidney stone or something. Four nights. And that night, they put it up on pillows like this so the swelling would go down. And my daddy, daddy came and spent the night, sat right there all night in the hospital and watched me. Now, I don't know what he was thinking. I have no idea what he was thinking. He probably thought, that boy, that boy, because I, I was always, you know, and you know what? I wasn't even saved, y'all. If that gun had went off and shot me in the chest, I'd be in hell right now, screaming for a drop of water on my tongue, begging God, let me out, get me out. When I got, I was born to serve the Lord, and my mom prayed, and I got saved. And I was a little bit older than Jesus was here. Look at this scripture here tonight. Luke chapter 2 and verse number, look at verse number 44. And they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. And they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. You ain't gonna find him there. And they found him not. They turned back to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass after three days they found him. Where? in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answered. They, he was 12 years old and blowing these guys' minds with his answers. 
And his mo- they were amazed, and his mother said, Son, why hast thou dealt thus with us? Thy, thy father and I have sought thee so- sorry, excuse me. And he said unto them, and hot dogs about to kill me today. Uh, hey, hot dogs and burning up and cupcakes out there. Uh, but anyway, how is it that you somehow wish you not that it must be about my father's business? Verse 50. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. All you teenagers, 10, 11, 12 year old, look at that right there. They understood. Jesus spoke and his parents didn't understand him. How many of y'all felt like, Mom, Daddy, you just don't, Mom and Daddy just don't understand? You ever felt like that? Sure you have. His didn't understand him. But look what he did. And the Bible said this. Look at verse number 51. And he went down with them. He didn't move out with some of his buddies and get him an apartment. He went down with them and was subject unto them. That means he'd done what they said. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Now notice 52. It said he increased in wisdom and in stature. Stature is like a statue. In other words, he grew this way, like that, to 5'10", according to Song of Solomon. And he went to 5'10", somewhere along in there. And you know what? He increased in wisdom too. You know what some of y'all's problem is? You're growing good this way, and you're really dumb this way. I mean, it's bad. It's really bad. Uh, you're like them blondes I was talking about this morning. You're, it's really bad. So you increase wisdom and stature. Now, the only perfect teenager, three things. This gonna, ain't going to be like maybe 10 minutes, and, and we're going to have our meeting. Number one, he went with them. He went with them. And uh, Jesus went with his mother and daddy. His friend said, you're not going to go with your parents. Like, oh, oh, God. He has to have his mom and daddy everywhere he goes. There ain't nothing wrong with that. There ain't nothing wrong with that at all. I know people, I know kids that don't even want. I know kids that their mama would take them to school and they'd say, let me out here, mom. I can walk around the building. And were embarrassed for p- other kids to see their own mama drop them off at school. Shame to their car. Or maybe ashamed of their mom. So all the cool kids, you know, drive convertibles, you know, and we ride the bus. You know, like that old pervert said in that song. And uh, you know what? Listen, they, Jesus went with them. Here goes Mary and Joseph going on there. He's perfect, 12-year-old son of God. And he ain't a bit of shame to ride in a car with his mama. When this boy's school, uh, he, got his, he got his permit. I think he's 15 and a half. And he, got him, he had a girlfriend and he wanted to go on a date. And... Uh, so he got him a date, and his mom, he just got his license, I think. They had this big old long Chevrolet, and we'd all go out to the burger place. Any of y'all live in Marion, you know where the uh, Nara's Japanese place, well, that used to be a burger joint a long time ago when I was a teenager, and everybody went out there and just hang around. And these boys would all park the cars down there and just sit on the hood, you know, and that's all there was to do in Marion. I mean, you know, you go you know, play putt-putt or go get ice cream or you know, we go to the movies, and that's what we did every Saturday night. And uh, uh, we, we sit there, and here he come driving around the place. He, he was over here, and his girlfriend was like from here to the pulpit on the other side, in the front seat. Them old cars had big old front seats. I, and, and he was driving around just like this, with both hands on the wheel, and his girlfriend, and his mother was sitting in the back seat. <laughs> we laughed. We laughed at him and said, look at him. <laughs> I'd take his mama on a date with him. We didn't even have a date. Uh, but but we, made, we made fun of him. We made fun of him for that. And there's something about kids saying, oh, you got to have your mama, we got to have your dad. Let me tell you all something. There ain't nothing wrong with you going somewhere with your parents. There's nothing wrong with you preferring to be with your parents. There ain't nothing wrong with a kid saying, you know what, I like to hang out with dad. I like to hang out with my mom. We go fishing together. We go hunting together. We go, listen, I, listen, they are paying the bills, you know, and they are putting clothes on you, you know. They're the ones putting that food that goes in your little spoiled gut. And I'm telling you tonight, there ain't nothing wrong with you hanging out with your parents. Jesus did. It's cool to take mom and dad with you. Amen. I hate it. My mom and dad's going. That's going to ruin everything. 
Well, you, well, you must be going to plan on doing something you shouldn't do if you don't want your parents to know about it. Number two, the Bible said he was subject to them. The Bible said he was subject to them. What does that mean, subject? Subject yourself, that means he obeyed his mom and dad. That means when Mary said clean your room, Jesus cleaned his room. And he didn't clean it like this. You know, just cram everything up under this. Okay, mom, it's clean. You couldn't have cleaned it that fast. Look, it's clean. He just crammed everything up under the bed. You know what mom said? She just said, everything has a place. All the kids... All you kids in here need to learn how to fold your shirts up, fold your clothes up, open the drawer, put your socks in there. Put a, say, Mom, where's my socks? They're wherever you throw them down last, probably. I'm telling you, you learn that, need to learn how to do that. Even if, your parents, listen to me a minute. It ain't going to hurt these kids one bit to learn how to pick up after themselves. It ain't going to hurt them one little bit. I believe Jesus, when he got through eating, I don't know this, but I believe when Jesus got through eating, he scraped his scraps off in the trash can and took his uh, plate to the sink and washed his plate off and put it there. That's what mom taught me to do. And I'm not a neat freak. I'm not the most neat person in the world except for my shoes and my car. I got to have clean shoes and clean car. Uh, but I'm telling you one thing, brother. You hear me tonight and you hear me well. Listen, he obeyed his mom mom and daddy, when mama said straighten it up, he straightened it up. When mama said, Jesus, time to turn it off, she, he turned it off. When my, he didn't have it on, I don't reckon he's Jesus. Uh, uh, he might have he watched the God not dead or something. Uh, but I tell you what, brother, he obeyed him. Well, these girls over there that night, we told them, y'all watch God's not, God's not dead. And Ethan couldn't find it. And I said, we got God's not dead part two. And then, we got the next and he's still not dead. <laughs> Part four, he ain't going to die. I, I listen, I, that might be what it is. Mama said, Mama said, Jesus, clean your room. Clean his room. Jesus, time for you to go to bed. Ding, out went the light. Just like that. Jesus, who are you talking to? Mama, you can see my phone. Look at all my text. Look at all my pictures. You know, these kids, they about die. They call mama and fuss. You know what they do in a lot of camps now? As soon as you get there, the phone goes in a basket. The phone goes in a basket, and they don't get it back unless there's an emergency. And you know what? A lot of parents, oh, don't take my child's phone. You're a retarded parent. That's what I, I hate to say that. But you got a brain about that big. If they get hurt, we'll call you. Good night. Huh? They sit there and mess with that thing the whole time. Don't hear half of what's going on in the house of God. Listen, the Lord, Mary said, uh, Jesus, I don't see your phone. Here, Mom. I wrote a few scriptures today. <laughs> you, <laughs> I'm, I, I, he, I, don't, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but whatever he had, they were able to have access to. Listen, I told my girls, I said, I better never come to your room and see one of them signs on your door that says, Private, no parents allowed. We'll tear that thing. What do you mean private? This ain't your room. It's our room. We're letting you use it for a while. I've even had parents say, well, I don't want to invade her privacy. Well, I'm telling you, you better. She'll be full of the devil. She'll be full of the devil. Amen. He was subject to them. Jesus comes in. Mom, may I spend the night with John? John who? The Baptist. Duh, my cousin. <laughs> I don't mean that. I'm just kidding. Mary says, I don't know. Elizabeth's been acting a little backslid lately. You, you might ought to. <laughs> I'm just making this up as I go. So I don't know. I, uh, you, you might have, ought to have John come to our house. What do they do over there? Mary just let him, didn't let him go off anywhere, do anything. Listen, can I say something to the parents here tonight? We're going to be gone with your kids for a week. Can I tell you all something? It ain't a sin to tell them kids no once in a while. It is not wrong. Good for them. 
Some parents are scared to death to tell their kids no, afraid they'll rebel. Well, you're raising a rebel if you never tell them. You have to tell them no. You can't just always be their buddy. You have to be their parent. You have to be their dad. You have to be their mother. You can't just buddy. You say, well, I want them just me and her just hang out and we're just all friends. You better learn how to be their mama. That's what you better do. Amen. I mean, Carrie, you know, when she was young, she was a lot older than the other two and, and we was like friends, of course, we still are. But she know, when it, when it come right down to it, I'm daddy, She's a child. Subject to them. Number three, and I'm through. He increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. People said, you know, I watched that boy. I watched him while you was preaching. And he just watched every move you made and he listened to every word he was. Listen, I watched him in Sunday school. That's what Jesus did. He increased he, as, his, as his custom was, he went to the temple every Sabbath day. And the Lord, I would, I would love to see that. Maybe when we get to heaven, the Lord might show us. A, I kind of think he will. I mean, we've got plenty of time. Big old screen about as big as 10 miles wide, 8D, 10D. I mean, it's like you're there and see all that happening and see the Lord Jesus Christ in the temple when he's 17, 18, 19. 20, 21, working with his hands. Who was it? Where's Ashton at? There's a hard working young man right there. <laughs> Lord, forgive me for saying that. Uh, he, the other day he came to the house, he said, he said, I said, can you work? And he said, yeah. And I said, here, let me see your hand. See your hand. Yeah, he's done a little bit. You can tell right there if you work, right there. It's supposed to be hard right there, not soft like a girl. If you got hands like a girl and you're a boy, you might be thinking like one before it's over with. It's supposed to have some calluses on you, right there. You ought to learn how to work a weed eater. Son, that guy right there, he's dangerous with a weed eater. <laughs> he could hurt himself or others. Ask Todd what a good job he did this this week working over there. Put him to work. Jesus increased in wisdom. I don't believe Jesus had little soft hands and girly attitudes and he sure didn't, wasn't real white, pale skin and red hair and blue eyes. That ain't the way Jesus looked. He was a man and he grew up in a carpenter's shop. You know what you do in a carpenter's shop, buddy? You saw wood, you, you put screws in, you cut wood, you nail with a hammer. He, had, he worked, he learned how to work. And there ain't nothing wrong with work, and work won't hurt you. He's a perfect teenager. I'm through tonight. I don't know why I wanted to preach this little sermon. But I think what I did was, so you parents would get a good idea of what a perfect teenager is. And we ain't, none of us got one. And let's push them the right way. All right? Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Come on, just play something softly, Miss Desi. I'm just, I didn't.